We're good? Set. Set. Okay. Uh, it's North Brantford Water Pollu Pollution Control Authority and Town Council meeting of North Brantford, Connecticut. I'm going to read the notice again. Uh, in accordance with, uh, with Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B regarding co COVID-19 <coughs> pan uh, pandemic, this meeting will be held remotely and with in-person attendance, attendance limited to 25, I can't talk tonight, limited to 25 people per state guidelines. All attendees must follow social distancing guidelines and wear masks. Uh, all right, today is Tuesday, September 1st, 2020. Michelle, you all set? I am, thank you. Okay, all right, let's uh, start with a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Show the roll call, please. Mayor Viglione. Here. Deputy Mayor Zampano. Here. Councilor Angeloni. Here. Councilor Diamond. Here. Councilor Duty. Here. Councilor Fawnen. Here. Councilor Goad. Councilor Paternoster. Here. Councilor Policia. Here. Okay. We have the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, August 11, 2020, WPCA and Town Council. So moved. Second. Motion was made by Councilor Angeloni, seconded by Councilor Diamond. Any uh, discussion? We have a, a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? All right, next is the uh, Water Pollution Control Authority agenda. First is correspondence and citizen statements. I don't think we have anything. Kurt's not here. Uh, no, no business tonight. Okay. Uh, next is unfinished business. Nothing. None. Next is new business. None. Nothing. And last we have uh, citizen statements and petitions. There's nothing there either. All right, we'll move into the regular uh, town council meeting. Uh, reports of committees, boards, and commissions. Our first one is Economic Development Commission, Roger Salloway, monthly report. Um, Economic Development, uh, is their next meeting is next Monday, but Roger's report is in our packet um, for us to review. Okay. Thank you, Rose. Uh, next is Parks and Rec. Um, Park and Recreation met last week um, and there was quite a lengthy discussion on youth football um, and ultimately Park and Rec voted to let them start conditioning. Um, the league that they're in for youth football, there's 12 towns that belong to the league and there's only one town that is not participating. Um, so there's 11 towns that are so they were going to start conditioning I believe uh, this week and they only have four home games right now that are scheduled they are also the park and rec voted to pay for sanitation of the bathrooms the the bathrooms that are there at, because their practice field is by wall field on, on the side of wall field so they are going to open up the bathrooms and they are going to pay to have them sanitized three um, times a week and they're going to do it in four week increments so that they so depending on what happens with the season if something happens that the season gets canceled or whatever that they're not committed for the whole season um, on there and uh, they did I know Jesse has been in meetings with East Shore Health and the town manager um, talking about this but uh, ultimately Park and Rec uh, Commission felt strongly to have the youth um, be able to participate and ultimately it is the parents decision whether the child is going to participate in the sports I know Little League 
ran this summer and they're running fall um, ball and there's very strict guidelines that they follow as will youth football um, and people from the board from youth football were at the meeting and they are all prepared to follow those guidelines very strictly and go with it and they just wanted to be able to offer something to the kids um, they have um, a, quite a good crew of kids that are participating ultimately it's up to the parents and the other restriction was is that the concession stand would not be open um, which is the same thing that uh, youth baseball uh, little league did not have the concession stand open either so they are starting at this point in time unless something happens that comes down from the state and closes them all down but right now they are going to start and um, they are getting things ready they're targeting a date of October 1st to open up the gym area but they had they have to do some things in there um, with the floor replacing the floor so that it's um, meets the guidelines for cleanliness to be able to clean it things like that and they also um, recently voted to give all veterans in the town free membership to the gym also um, and I'd like to thank Bill Savastano for his work in with the Commission in getting them the list of names of how many people that that currently would involve but they did vote on that um, also recently so that's it how about, how about um, outdoor basketball courts any discussion on that I think the nets are still off um, well that was that was taken out of they had voted to put it back up and and which they did but then that was overruled um, by the town manager who has authority over that at, at based okay. on conversations with um, Eshore. Eshore Health yeah that's in a ca higher category and, and but it's still it's still every week we review that on a call with health department as to what the state is coming out in terms of guidelines and recommendations so I'm sure we'll be revisiting it again because uh, there is uh, always a call for that but currently they remain uh, off uh, or on that list okay thank you uh, next is police commission no meeting that was fast yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right next we have you caught me off guard here next we have uh, the Board of Ed Education and Town Council Communication Subcommittee uh, no, you forgot fire, fire. 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 Oh, fire Commission I'm sorry sorry guys so the regular meeting is this Thursday but they had a special meeting last night <clears throat> there were two main topics discussed uh, the first one they just clarified some language in their orders for the use of company four in the training room and in a nutshell it spells it out that it may only be used for North Brantford Fire Department purposes and um, regional um, regional fire services uh, meetings uh, it will not be used for anything outside of that and it just like I said just clarifies the language in as to who can use it and uh, for what reasons uh, so they made it very simple the other thing that was brought up was they're going to be requesting um, a new ambulance the all three of their ambulances currently have over a hundred thousand miles on them um, there's a 2013 that's been a troubled vehicle that they attempted to get a lemon law on it but then found out that municipal vehicles can't don't fall into the lemon law um, so they were stuck with it and it's been um, from what I understand a, kind of a nightmare to deal with so they'd like to uh, trade that one in um, and upgrade to another vehicle um, the uh, what they're looking to upgrade to is a Ford f550 4x4 which I think is a great idea especially with the topography and the hills in our town um, and uh, it's going to be a little bit more expensive than they were initially thinking because it has to I guess new codes says that it has to have an auto loader for the stretcher in the back which adds about thirty thousand dollars to the price of the vehicle um, the original price was about 200 they were estimating two hundred twenty five thousand dollars for it um, I think they want to ask for no more than 275 K but they're at the same time I think they're looking to do a lease to purchase on it as well um, but I think that's uh, a little bit further on down the agenda so. 
That's it. Okay. Thanks, Ron. Uh, next is the Board of Education and Town Council Communication Subcommittee. No meeting. All right. Next, we have uh, Town Planning Goals Subcommittee. No meeting. Next is Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, their last meeting was uh, August 20th. Um, they're still working with the owners of the gas station uh, up by uh, mm -hmm. Bobby's Pizza there. Um, that's been extended to the, net, to the next meeting. There's some concerns about storm drains. Um, and uh, the next meeting is um, I don't know the next meeting, actually. It should be this week, oh. right? Oh, it's, actually, is it's Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Thursday. Say. Yes, I'm sorry. I knew that. This Thursday? Yeah. The third? Third. Okay. All right. Is it? Yep. All right. Next is North Fairford Police Department Facility and Town Center Advisory Committee. The committee uh, has met a few times since the last town council meeting. The committee met on August 19th reviewed the design and the three and a 3d image of the new building i think people are pleased they're tweaking it everybody has some, some say in it but i think it's coming along very nicely on august 26 we had a telephone meeting to discuss the hvac system and that hasn't been resolved yet and i guess franny had a lot to say about that and there's some concerns about what the architect was planning for the hvac system and if you have questions about that franny would be able to ask them answer them for you and we have a meeting tomorrow night to continue the review of the design. I think it's going really, really well. Everybody is participating, and I think please will what's happening. Okay. Thanks, Marie. Uh, next, we have finance <coughs> subcommittee. No meeting. All right. And next is the ad, ad hoc uh, design and review committee. Okay, this committee has had a very robust schedule. On August 13th, we had a tour of the high school. And I'll tell you, John Florio was terrific. He was just wonderful and, and taking us around and showing us the entire plant and what you know what's happening there. On August 18th, we reviewed the findings from that tour. Um, we had a list of things that we were concerned about. On August 25th, we met again and we reviewed the designs that are proposed by the architect for a new facility. We were supposed to meet last night with the superintendent and the architect and somebody from the state, but unfortunately that was canceled, I guess, because of people having, still having problems with the storm. Um, we're scheduled to meet probably sometime next week. As I said, we're, we have a very robust schedule and I think the committee is working very diligently and um, hopefully we'll have some, some recommendations soon for the town council. Yeah, you guys are doing a great job too. Thank you. Okay, next uh, we'll move into the town manager's report, COVID-19 update. Sure, um, I, I could do that. I, I don't know if you want to hear, uh, as Marie mentioned, that the meeting was canceled last night for uh, ad hoc because of a lot of cleanup, and we, we do have Fran here. I was just, if, if the council would allow me just to give a brief, you know, update on that um, storm event, and obviously significant, I thought maybe you'd like to hear uh, about that as well. Uh, you know, and, and Fran can certainly chime in. Uh, but it was significant, as most of you know, and I, I tried to communicate uh, with uh, several emails, but we were knocked out and knocked pretty good. Uh, in fact, uh, Rose Angeloni and I were here for trying to get a, a meeting on, on uh, a Zoom meeting, and, and we got knocked out. So it was swift, it was powerful, and uh, it did a lot of damage. Um, and uh, I don't like to say that uh, public works and, and police, fire, EMS response was, I think, in my opinion, tremendous, and what I hear from, from residents who have emailed and called in, uh, very grateful for, for the response. UI, uh, I thought, was uh, responsive as well uh, in terms of getting uh, resources necessary. We also had the help and assistance. I think it's worth noting publicly to thank uh, Durham uh, for sending us an extra crew, and West Hartford, believe it or not, mm -hmm. sent uh, uh, several uh, personnel and equipment, um, trucks and, and equipment, uh, to help us and help public works uh, in the clearing of streets and, and making safe uh, for UI to come in and, 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 and segue from that uh, make safe to restoration mode. And I think it all worked uh, very well. Um, and uh, certainly uh, Fran uh, can tell you a little bit more, but uh, I've been working in, in constant contact with, with Fran about uh, the calls coming in are really, uh, because of the concentration and severity of, of the storm, 
uh, talking about uh, cleanup and like we've done in the past when, when it reaches this type of level, um, we have done a, a curbside pickup and I think that warrants it in this case. Uh, and I, I hope you, you all agree that, that that's way, one way we can, we can help. It's, good. it's obviously going to hurt the, hurt the budget, but I think it's important. That some, it, they're just massive, massive trees out there and, and massive cleanup efforts underway. Um, not to mention the, the you know the lines that, that were restored and some people still have services that are pulled off the house and still are you know working on that but uh, um, I'll certainly open it up to, to Fran to comment on that but I thought it was a, a really coordinated effort and a swift uh, effort in restoring um, yeah I got, a lot, I got a lot of thank yous too from uh, from senior citizens in the town stuff that was picked up at, at the street uh, you did a great job uh, everybody police fire you guys know that every time it seems like every time we come in here we have something nice to say about you guys we got a great we got a great service here between fire police public works the rest of the town too, the public uh, uh, libraries and you did a great job too mike i know you've been around you've been keeping me informed of what's going on i really appreciate it uh, i drove around and looked at some of it myself and i just want to thank you guys also i wanted to do it in the beginning of this and i forgot so thanks for what you said mike you said uh, you said what i wanted to say we, we really appreciate it. Sure. Fran, you got? Yep. Yeah, like I said, <clears throat> every storm is different, and, th and this storm was a very, very difficult storm. Uh, police, the, both the, the chief, deputy chief, chief sewer, you know, we had no communication really going on with cell phones. The radio system worked, but, you know, we had our troubles. And it was just so fast, and a lot of damage, I mean, <clears throat> The, the damage in a small part of our town it was it, it was unbelievable. I mean, when you get down to Brook Lane there, you, you couldn't even get in there. And uh, a lot of people got damaged to their houses, which is, you know, a hurricane, and we, we've had them bad. But th this, this thing here with the amount of houses that were damaged in an area was just incredible. Um, but um, I got to say, the crew, my crew did fantastic. Uh, everybody, I mean, all, all, everybody was out working with them dogs that night after the storm um, but you know we we got the we got all the roads opened up by the, the next day which was really incredible UI jumped right in and we have to have UI with us to do that um, and uh, of course we got the help from West Harvard called me and so Durham which was kind of nice because we kept them in an area and we went and did the other stuff around town um, we have a tremendous amount of wood <laughs> we just got it all ground up. I got to tell you, it's just as big as it was when the, in, in July. So um, we are doing the pickup. We're going to start from the Valley Road area and work toward the, the hard hit area. But the hard hit area, we've been there for like three days. So it's a lot better than it what was. And there's a lot of stuff taken out of there. But uh, Franny, can you just, because I know the pickup is not going to be for the whole town. It's a, it's a certain area. So can you just, for the public, just but let them know basically where, which sections? Basically, Route 80 South and the estates is, is included in that. They're, they're on the other side of it. But from the estates and part of Totucket Road from like Mill no, down right. to 80, it's pretty much, after you get up that way, there is some, a little bit of stuff, but not, not like, uh, I think that would, kind of is the area that we, we really worked in. But the estate's got some, uh, not as much damage, but there's quite a bit of wood down over there. So, um, and we're gonna start the, after Labor Day, and we're gonna start from Valley Road and work to the west. So by hopefully by the week. We are hiring a couple contractors, we're gonna be using dumpsters and uh, some specialized equipment. Um, we actually just bought a, uh, a grapple for our mini so we can load the trucks up and but uh, you know it's, it's going to take a little time to recover from that I mean there were, some of the residents I think down in Brook are going to be you know just getting the stuff out of their yards it's, it's just amazing the amount of damage we had some road, road damage on Totucket a little bit on Brook um, but uh, it, was, it was interesting I can tell you okay thank you, you did yeah. a great job and uh, Fran also mentioned that uh, he suggested we continue to um, have the drop-off site extended hours until further notice. 
as a way to get some of the smaller stuff while they're waiting uh, for them to come around with the big stuff. Uh, to, uh, public Works uh, behind Wallfield, Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., uh, as we did from the tropical storm. Uh, we'll continue to open, keep that open, yeah. and allow people to, to come in and do that. And we, we got to look out for our seniors. We, we helped out some there, but so, some of it is, you know, we, you know, we can't be cleaning yards up, but, yeah. you know, we try to help out as much as we can. So if there's people out there that can help your seniors, you know, get some stuff out the road, and, you know, if they have issues, they should call us and just, uh, you know, we can, you know, try to help them out and get somebody over there for them. And we do have to have some stuff at Jerome Harrison, but it's not that affect school. Or, yeah, or so just get a, uh, just get the names and addresses of the seniors so yep. that our volunteer organizations or yep. people can help. Get them out there, yeah. Williams Road is also included in that. That's south, but that they got hit pretty good too. So. Would it make sense to put a map on the website and yeah. just have the streets have highlighted? We do, yep, we, we do have that. Oh, okay, uh, gave, it, gave it to the press as well. Uh, we're gonna actually use it for uh, uh, I uh, reverse 911 call uh, to get that in to localize to those streets as well. Yes. Okay, yep. great. Thank Have you. That highlighted. Yeah. yeah, it was just a very, very coordinated, uh, great effort all around. Uh, really swift, swift effort. Um, so I, I don't know uh, if there's any other questions on, on that, but uh, we continue to take calls and we'll continue to push out the uh, information on that. Okay. Um, so uh, if I go back to uh, COVID-19 update, um, you, I gave out, uh, you should have this in your folder, a, a printed out uh, uh, update on uh, cases, four, four new cases uh, since the last report I gave, uh, but uh, and, and in the last few days, I would think in the last week, um, one on the 20th of August, 27th, and two recently, so th those are the four new cases. I think I reported out obviously the last time, uh, 92, and, and so, you know, we're, we're relatively, as I said, relatively flat in terms of our, our, our cases that keep tri trickling in one, two cases, and, and that's about it. Um, you know, as you see, zero for uh, August 6th, 13th. Um, so, you know, what we're doing is, is, is effective in, in terms of keeping our distance and, and uh, wearing masks. So I think this community understands it, gets it, and, and uh, we're also trying to uh, coordinate uh, another mask uh, giveaway as we we, we, were, we were hoping uh, before the, the, the storm threw, threw us off and our, our delivery, we had a little snafu on, uh, on delivery of, of masks, but we had done that effectively uh, earlier this year and we were looking to do another mask giveaway as in coordination with schools opening up um, to try and do that, but uh, we'll try to get that back on track now that the, we've done the cleanup with the storm. Um, testing is another thing that we're working with uh, w with organizations to try and get them in. We had uh, one lined up uh, uh, and um, unfortunately they, they've got some staffing issues and they've had to put us on, on hold, uh, but hopefully we'll, we'll be able to hear something positive from them uh, and get that. So where they come into the community to provide uh, testing on, on site, we'll give either, you know, designate public works or the drive-in park and, and come to a tent and obviously it's weather dependent uh, but something like that where you pop up a, a tent and be able to do uh, some uh, testing for for residents locally not no out-of-pocket expense uh, uh, for, for the town or for uh, for any person uh, coming so it'd be a free free test that that's what we originally were working on and before we got told we would put on hold so uh, we'll continue to work that because I think it's important uh, to understand where we are with with testing and um, and, and cases, so uh, we'll also see how the you know opening of the the schools next week uh, goes, and we'll uh, I'll be talking with department heads tomorrow about uh, potentially you know our our plan and schedule for uh, our hours and opening um, and and see where that goes with respect to cases and monitoring cases. So that's where we are right now. And if there are any questions around COVID town hall yeah that would be uh, one of the things we talked about tomorrow in terms of trying to get through with uh, um, see where the schools are and get those um, uh, staffing levels to see where we're, where we're at but yeah I mean as Rose reported out uh, we've got other buildings off-site in terms of rec uh, senior center to, to consider uh, library and uh, you know public works has obviously has been been working right on through so um, town hall will be a focus of our conversation for tomorrow 
So I'm, I'm a little confused as to what the town hall has to do with the school's opening. No, just in, in terms of, of, of school uh, sending kids, sending children back to school and those schedules in terms of the hybrid schedule and getting our staffing back up uh, to that and looking, I was originally looking at just whether to see if there would be some type of spike uh, after schools opened. Um, be, you know, cautiously proceeding to, to make sure the numbers are maintaining a flat level uh, before we did that. So I think that's with this report here. I, I think we, I'm, I'm more assured now that I think we, we've got a very stable uh, community in terms of cases. But any given week, I, I don't know what's going to happen. So what do you have a date that the town hall is going to open up, even though it's closed to the public? We can't bring employees back. Then. Well, no, I think I think what we got to do. I've got to look at a plan uh, and and kick that through with respect to, to uh, staffing levels. But I, I I don't see why with school opening up that we couldn't look for uh, you know next uh, you know mid mid September in a week or two to to get things ramped up. That seems crazy. The, Mike, the CDC guidelines are for exposure are no mask for more than 15 minutes within six feet. If you staff the town hall, you wouldn't be able to meet those those guidelines currently, because they're according to them. There's very little risk if you're wearing a yeah. mask and you keep the six feet, yeah. and your exposure time is less than 15 minutes. I know I, every shift for my work, I have to submit a form at the end of the shift. Mm -hmm. Anybody that I was around without a mask um, for more than 15 minutes, I have to put on a list. It seems to me like there's not ton of people working here and if everybody's required to wear masks I don't see where the where the risk is unless I'm missing something no I I, I think yeah I've got to re review with uh, with the shore on that and also make sure that we're I just got to double check everything with respect to uh, our safeguards as well and, and supplies I think were there uh, but the but the screen or sneeze guards and things of that nature I think we've got one or two uh, locations that we've just got to nail down but again I want to go through it with uh, in detail tomorrow with department heads uh, before I announce uh, a date I want to be certain that we're ready okay all right uh, Mike next we have uh, fire slash EMS training and budget process update right so we had you know, questions uh, at the last meeting um, and I know Ron had just uh, uh, reported out from the fire commission in terms of the EMS and, and in terms of training um, about the policy there. Uh, I know Chief Seward is, is still here as well and, and uh, can uh, answer any question, any lingering questions you may still have about that process. Um, but, you know, we've gone through and reviewed and, and I know that uh, he had a answers in there. Uh, one of the lingering things is um, uh, the, the legal questions and conflict of interest that uh, Vin Marino, I've handed off to him. Uh, he should be joining us. He's going to finish. He's been finishing up a, a meeting, should be joining us. I'm not sure that that's complete at this point. I think he wants to review or has not, I have not seen a finished product uh, or talk to him about uh, next meeting for that. Um, but. I don't know if there's any lingering questions about fire EMS training, uh, but there was also budget uh, process updates and uh, Anthony supplied uh, budget questions and comments that's in your packet. And I think it could be an opportunity, uh, since he wasn't here last meeting, uh, to go through that, uh, that process, um, you know, and walk you through, I think, one of the questions uh, numerous questions, but one of them was about the um, rebate for um, um, the condos, and I, I think that was one of the, the issues there. There were some questions about the budgets and fiscal year end issues, so I'm not sure where you want to go or if you had time to digest. It was rather lengthy reply in terms of information and data that was provided in that response, um, but I think you know, importantly, uh, from my perspective, just, um, you know, the fact that, you know, we're in a pretty good financial climate for the town financial system and our 
financial um, condition, if you will. And, uh, you know, we do follow the budget process and protocols and policies. And, you know, we have a fund balance uh, is at 15.82%, uh, uh, so almost 16% uh, on fund balance. And we're, I think we continue to fund ARC and pensions and bond rating is good. I think we're in a really good spot from a budgetary standpoint. And I know there's some questions and issues about this surplus that triggered questions uh, about that. So I'm hoping we can uh, answer those questions and, and uh, put those questions to bed. Were there any specific, uh, after reviewing Anthony's uh, response, was there any, any question? Well, yeah, I didn't get a chance to even look at that yet. So I need at least till next meeting to review it and decipher it and dig through it because the part I looked at was so confusing it wasn't even funny. So which part, Mike? Uh, breaking down some of the, the uh, salaries and budgets and uh, retirements and who left and who didn't leave. So. I have to make a chart on that, so I, I don't have time to talk about it tonight. So I just, <clears throat> uh, two things. One is the big, the big thing that triggered this for me, and I know I, I talked about it last meeting, is that a lot of this information we didn't have prior to our budget session. And for any citizens that are watching this, we went up on people's taxes this year by a quarter of a mil. If we had more information, better information for the budget season, and we could have anticipated actually even a fraction of the underspend that we had, we could have easily, if the town council decided and agreed upon it, we could have lowered the taxpayers' taxes by one to two mils with the amount of money. One mil in this town is approximately, Rose, correct me if I'm wrong, 1.2 million. We were underspent by three million. That's bothersome for me. That means that we are overtaxing our citizens. And that's what prompted everything with me last, last meeting. Now this meeting I handed out a one page document to everybody. <clears throat> and basically what I'm gonna be requesting tonight is that on a quarterly basis, the town council is provided with a high level overview of the budget. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna compare um, budget to actuals, okay? It's gonna show whether we're over or under. And the, the triggering factor is gonna be over or under by 5%, okay? If we're over or under by 5% in any department, all the departments will be listed on this, then we're gonna get a year-to-date commentary as to why it's over or under by 5%. And then you're gonna, and then we want the, the line items that are affecting that 5% to be listed as well. For every single department, and then at the end of it, it shows a three-year look back as to where the numbers come in for the budget and then if it's if it's over or under there's a year-end commentary as well and i think this is important for the town council because i know myself and quite a few others feel like we were a little blindsided this year with how we went through the budget season i think if we are given a report like this and i can give the uh, if, if anybody wants to use this as a basis for for building it. Uh, I can give them the electronic document. But this is gonna let us know where everybody stands. It's gonna let the department heads, now I understand you go over stuff with the department heads, but when you go over stuff with the department heads, do you compare budget to actual? Yeah, I, I think we've got a, a running report from Anthony, correct me if I'm wrong, that, that shows that. Uh, every month. Every, yeah. mo every month. Every, every department head has access to their budget. But do you review it with them? Do you let them know what's outstanding and what's not? They so have that, access to print their own reports on. Do all the department heads understand that system and have good understanding of it? Because I kind of got the feeling that maybe not, but. Yeah, and, and, and to your point, Ron, I, they, if they don't, I put out a, a, I mean, the GEM system isn't a perfect system that we use in terms of financials, but 
I, I put it out there that any any department head that wants a refresher or retraining on that can get it, and 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 it is a uh, responsibility. But in, in what Anthony I was saying is that that it, in addition, I guess, I guess you want you want a higher level, and, and I'm just trying to understand a higher level and and anything over five percent trigger or under or under. If you're okay. underspent or overspent by five percent, five percent will be the trigger. We want to know what line items are affecting that five percent. We want commentary on what's going on and explanation. This way we can pace ourselves throughout the year and know where we stand and not and not have all of a sudden after we've already passed the budget be hit with, oh by the way, we're underspent, we're overspent, or whatever like happened this this year. Um, and it's it's happening in, you know, a, you know, I know one of the points of contention was the police the police pensions, right? Mm -hmm. okay. um, you know, it's something that we can gauge, we'll be aware of. Because right now, we're basically, without a report like this quarterly, we're kind of in the blind going into budget season. We don't know, and then we don't get anything until afterwards. Yeah, and, and right, I, 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 I get it. And, and I, I, I don't think that's a, a, such a bad idea, or in fact, I think it's, I understand where you're coming from, it's, it's, it's information, right? So the more information, the better. And just. I mean, I, I, I'll go back, and before you, you were here, and, and some of the other council members. I mean, when I first started, and I and I pulled it out recently, but a, a 13 uh, 2000 no, I'm sorry, 2015 memo and a 2017 memo uh, to to department heads to talk about a, a budget freeze because the process is such that in addition to reporting to the council, meeting with department heads, talking about you know you know, monthly, quarterly, and so forth. And so when January, February rolls around, and we've got a situation we've been monitoring and saying, listen, we're, we're, we're not looking good here. We're tr the trend is, 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 is not good for us to finish the year. Uh, we've, in you know, I've instituted those. And, and so the department heads have a sense and, and know that, or they'll come to me and say, or a friend, you know, one of those memos was, you know, the fact that we had, I think we had looked at, uh, you know, public works and, and storm issues. Uh, 33 storms in, in uh, 2000, I think it was 2015, um, you know, storm events and, and ice events that, that you know, triggered and, and other things that, that are anomalies that throw off the best budget you could forecast. And obviously, I, I think you understand that. So um, I understand where you're going. It's, it's, it's nobody likes surprises and you want to know that what the numbers we are. We just want to know, and Mike, what was the timeline we discussed? And uh, Roseville? Should be the first of the month on a quarter. The first uh, first meeting of the month on a quarterly basis, and I think if we do that, we'll get one. We sh that should set us up so we get one right before we go into budget talks. So we'll be hopefully well informed right up through budget, and we'll we'll have that information and we'll know if there's going to be significant shortages or if we're going to have surpluses. We can factor that into the next year's budget at least part of it. I know there's stuff that goes unpaid and stuff that still comes rolling in through August, but I mean, even like this year, there, there's, you know, it, it was obvious we were gonna have quite a large surplus. So, you know, if we can factor in even part of that into the next year's budget, you know, we could more accurately tax our citizens and not overtax our citizens uh, if we know that there's gonna be a surplus of money. Well, part, part of this also, though, Mike, it's not just for us to know, for us council members to know, but in my opinion, you should be having this meeting, budget meetings with your, um, with your departments so that you know. You know, you know, rather than just saying, well, all my departments have, are, have, are, capable of having, are capable of viewing their budgets, you know, live, but it's more of sitting down and okay where are we where are we going what do we need what don't we need what's going to change and that puts your finger on the pulse so that if you're in a meeting um, and um, you already know the answers rather than coming in and saying oh I, I, I don't know that I have to get the answer you, you need to know that this information it's important <clears throat> and it also uh, creates a, a in my opinion, again, a, a good working environment for you with the town. Mm -hmm. You're the president of North Brantford. You're the president of a $50 million company called North Brantford. 
it's tra it's transparency. It's just yeah. putting it out there and saying, listen, this is this is where we're at. This is what we're looking at, and this way we feel like okay, you know, like Tommy said, we we have a handle on the pulse. We we know where we are because this isn't just about placing blame either. If we're falling short in certain areas, as, as a as a body, we want to support you guys. We want to support the town. It's not just about the overages either, right? This year, Franny, I mean. 2020, the way it's going, Franny, you might have five more of these storms, God help us, you know, and, you know, if, if his budget's hurting or something like that, we want to be able to see that too and be able to, you know, get him what he needs to finish out the year and complete his job to the best of his ability. So, you know, right now it's just kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. we're in the dark a little bit. Gotcha. All right. Yep. Shed that, some light that, that monthly report that you issue means... It's garbage when we, we're sitting at the table looking at it. It's garbage. There's nothing in there that, that defines one account is overspent or one account is underspent or one account has $140,000 in it. It doesn't show us that. We see nothing there. We see nothing where it's 5% over or 5% under, where it's triggered and that line item has to be brought to our attention. This, this hopefully corrects that. And you, is that in the form of a motion? I'll second it. Uh, yeah, I'd like to make a motion that the town provide on a quarterly basis to the town council uh, the proposed uh, report showing each individual department where they are to budget with a trigger of 5% plus or minus. Uh, if it meets that trigger, there's commentary as to why it's plus or minus, and it also lists the line items that are causing the plus or minus 5%. Wake, you're seconding it? Yes. Okay, motion was made by Councilor Glicia, second by Councilor Duty. Uh, any further discussion? Just a question. Um, I understand that if there is a projected overage, we may want to reallocate funds, which is probably a wise thing to do, and more knowledge and information is never a bad thing. I guess where I don't see this going is if there are broad underfunded line items, what do we do about that in the middle of the tax year? We can't adjust the mill rate in November. So But there are other accounts we can there's a there's a general fund if we're over in one and under and another, you know, I think there's, as a council, there's there's some flexibility there. But there is some flexibility, and I think, in, in a significant extent, we're going to be operating on faith, because that's the situation where I think our only recourse might be tapping into our uh, unfunded balance. Well, the other thing too, Joe, is I mean, if, if that scenario plays out, it's going to play out either way. I would rather have the information and the knowledge. I'll, I'll concede that. I'm just asking, what's the next step? Right. If, in mm -hmm. fact, it happens on a broad scale basis. And we got to you know. Well, I think it's budgeted, Joe. I don't think it's going to happen on a, on a broad basis. I, I think we one hope. item will trigger it within a budget, a line item, and, and I didn't think know, the we country could, we could look at it. We're, we're aware of it. <laughs> we, we know what's happening. Now, Shit goes into June, and all of a sudden there's a surprise. All right, I, I, I will concede that. All right, thank you. I just have another comment in regards to, I, I mean, I, I agree with Ron was saying in, in the detail and reports and everything like that, but as far as, you know, the budget coming up and we had $3 million excess, and then we could have saved, we could have cut the budget by one to two mills. That's not entirely true because out of that three million, you got to realize 2.2 million was from the Board of Education. And it was a very strange year for the Board of Education in their budget. They normally do not have $2.2 million left at the end of the year. Schools were closed since March 16th. Um, so I don't think we can take that into account for this year. Um, that part of it and so that one to two mills that we could have reduced the, the mill rate for that 
really wouldn't have happened if we didn't have this pandemic because we wouldn't be in that situation. Of but you would concede you would concede that we we wouldn't have had to raise the taxes this year, and we could have lowered them. That that definitely is a possibility. But I just wanted to make it clear that the one to two mills that we could have based on the three million dollar surplus, a lot of that is due to the Board of Education, the two point two million dollars. And normally I, I've never in the twelve eleven years I've been on the council, I've never seen that happen. And a great part of that was due to the pandemic and the schools being closed since March. So I don't think it's fair to tell the townspeople that we could have reduced their taxes by one to two mills. That, well, that's my well it was a theoretical statement, yeah, it was, a generalized yeah, statement. It was in theory, but you know what? We knew on February 16th when everything closed that we're recouping savings, quick savings, you know, on, on every aspect of it. Wound up to be two million in the, in the school system, wound up to be one million in the town side. We wound up with a $3.2 million surplus. We were told through so, the whole budget process by the Board of Education, I can't remember what the town told us, but through the whole budget process, you know what we were told from the Board of Education, there was going to be zero savings. That's true. Right? We so did, I, actually, I actually would love the Board of Education to give us this same type of report on a quarterly basis so that we know where they stand as well, but that's for another day. So. Okay. Michelle, I have a, have a motion, I have a second. Can I have a, a vote on this, please? You may. Mayor McLeon. Yes. Deputy Mayor Zampiano. Yes. Councilor Angeloni. Yes. Councilor <coughs> Diamond. Yes. Councilor Duty. Yes. Councilor Fornan. Yes. Councilor Paternoster. Yes. Councilor Policia. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is community events and presentations. No, no. Okay. Nothing for that. All right. Uh, next, I have citizen statements, petitions, and correspondence. Vic? Did you Sorry. want to say something? This yeah, might be, this I just might be the time. Clear up something in reference to the budget and the department heads. Just so, from the commissioner's standpoint, there's three of us here. It took our chief seven months to get access to the budget. He's been here a year and five months. It took seven years, seven months, from the day he started to get him access to the financial system. It took him another two months after that to get trained on it. So it's what was said before around that report would help us tremendously to know where we stand because we we check it and we have our own spreadsheet and we just got one that you know the other day uh commissioner palumbo and uh, the chief the deputy chief were in a room and the report that we got doesn't even line up with the, the facts that we print off the reports so that report would help us and our chief helped the fire chief if i'm not mistaken and he just got on four or five months ago, Chief? Um, about four months ago, he just got access, and I think he's been here quite a long time. Finally just got access to his own financial reports through our department's help and some training. So all these department heads need to, should be trained prior to even starting if they're controlling any of our budgets. I'm sure you guys would agree to that. Thank you. Is there any excuse for that, Mike? So, uh, no. No. if I could, no. while, while you're on the, this is uh, still open discussion for citizen safety. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, uh, with regards to that same subject, uh, please don't think that we were uh, uh, not informed by town hall about our monthly budget status. Um, because even though I did not have access to the town gem system, um, being in a remote location, uh, it would be my job to come down to town hall, make sure I got a monthly printout from finance, and on a monthly basis, as part of our board of fire commissioners meeting, uh, the, the uh, ambulance budget and the fire budget uh, for uh, historical, the previous fiscal year, 
the present fiscal year and the actual, which is all part of that particular report, uh, was provided on a monthly basis. Uh, and as we moved towards the, uh, the new budget cycle and working on the next fiscal year's budget, that was always taken into consideration. And so with regards to surpluses that you're talking about in the town in general, when I look at the surpluses that we had from uh, the fire and the ambulance account in fiscal year 2019 and 2020, uh, I am directly attributing it um, to COVID, whether it be personnel not wanting to go uh, on extra ambulance calls, not being able to, to provide training, uh, not being able to conduct any other type of classes, not having to buy supplies because the state was issuing the supplies on a, on a weekly basis, which stopped last week. Uh, so it, it gave us a, a very good inventory. Um, so uh, those that have sat in the town council for a long time, uh, as the town manager said, you know, if you look historically back at budgets, um, when there was a rise in cost because of storms back in 2015, uh, there were budget freezes put on. So the, uh, you know, the uh, paradoxic took place. So we could not purchase. So it put us in a difficult position. So there's, there's an item that'll come up a little bit uh, later in the agenda that allows us to do one time, uh, a one time acquisition of something that's never been possible before. But it's only possible because we have excess funds left over this year. And as I said, I directly associate it with um, everything that has taken place since March 13th. So you know, I, you know, knock, knock on wood that the, you know, we're not going to see this next year. We're going to be back on the, on the regular budgetary cycle. And you know, from the fire department standpoint, we work based upon a, uh, a budget that provides us with the, the necessary um, fiscal resources to allow us to do our job and nothing more. And as I, I have said, you know, after this year, with all that the town council has provided for us in not only the operating budgets for fire and ambulance, but also on capital, that we're in really good shape. Um, and you know, it's something that this town council can be proud of, it's something that I'm proud of, and I know it's respected by our membership. Um, so again, you know, we're, we're moving in the right direction and we hope to continue to do that. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Yeah, I wanted to say uh, personally thanks to Police, Fire, and Public Works for the great job that was done in the last few weeks and last few weeks. And uh, Rose had mentioned that uh, I helped out with the, uh, the, the access for the veterans to get to the gym. That was really Steve Torino. I did some, uh, uh, offer some information on that, but it was his, his bag. Uh, he was after that for a number of months. I will take credit for, uh, I had noticed that the uh, pocket rec meeting only had one public comment. It was at the end of the meeting, which doesn't serve much purpose if a person wants to say something to add to the agenda or the conversation. And lastly, this whole budget you're talking about, you guys are piling on with me. COVID screwed up everything, you know that. I mean, and you're trying to put it on one or two people. I don't come to these meetings a few few years now. I get the I get the, the gist of what's going on. I read that whole packet just like the you got today. That comes in the on the website. I read it. You guys are piling on. Quit. Thanks, Bill. Mr. Murray, I'll make a comment. Sure. Um, as you know, there's been a lot of uh, crime activity in town, and my neighbor's car was stolen uh, this past week, and I got a couple of emails from a couple of neighbors of mine, and I just want to compliment the chief of police, Chief Howard, because I forward those emails to him, just as an FYI, just an FYI, you know, chief, this is what some people are saying, and I would have to compliment him, because within a couple hours, again, all I do is FYI, the chief responded to these people in a very positive manner without laying out you know what's going on but he made the citizens feel comfortable that the North Brantford Police Department was on top of it 
and was aware of what's going on. So Chief, I'd just like to personally thank you for that. You know, a lot of times you send it to somebody in his position, it just gets lost. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't get acknowledged. And he acknowledged myself and the citizen. And I think that says a lot about the Chief that he, he took the time to read it, <coughs> digested it, and responded in a very positive manner. So that's who we have leaving our police department. So I just want to thank you. Thanks, thanks, Lou. That is, that's important stuff. He's got to know what the people out there are thinking. And that's exactly what he said, Bob. Yeah. Was that he, he wants to hear it so he knows what's going on. Right, what right. So thanks. Okay. Thank, thanks, Chief. Thanks, Lou. Uh, all right. Let's, uh, resignations and appointments. We have the resignation of Michelle Proviture from the Parks and, and, Parks and Recreation Commission. Um, there, I don't, there's no action needed. No, I would just like to personally thank Michelle. Um, she served on Park and Rec for five years, um, and I, you know, she came onto the committee um, a number of years ago um, when we were looking for people. She did a lot um, on Park and Rec, and she is um, very much involved in the Poco Fest. And she said that um, I did ask her if she would still continue to do that because she did a lot for us behind the scenes. And she is still going to help us out on the Poco Fest. Um, she just needed to resign at this point in time. Both of her boys are in high school now, and she's much more involved in their activities and didn't have time for Park and Rec anymore. But she did a great job in the five years that she was on the committee. So I'd just like to thank her. Thank you. I was wondering why. Thanks, Rose. She took on um, the high school uh, football fundraising, and she's doing a tremendous job. In that. Yeah. So. Okay. Next, we have un unfinished business discussion and action. The first one is contingency transfers for the year 2020, 2000 Table One, uh, 2021, which we tabled from the last meeting. Right, this is a request to cover the uh, salaries for the administrators group, department heads. We never got an answer on uh, our question on that, so. Yeah, I put out an email on and, and I think I've made it clear in the last meeting that assigning a percentage uh, is a performance matter uh, that I don't believe is in should be in the public realm, public discussion in terms of performance, and I can't can't get into the whys in a public forum. So I think all the information is there uh, to understand what the transfer is about. And again, it's a tool that uh, the council had given to me to to use to 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 manage the department heads, and and this is the this is the request. Okay. I'm going to make a motion. Um, be it hereby resolved that the town manager is hereby authorized to appropriate from reserve for contingency account 101 4703 and transfer into the appropriate accounts as soon as possible for the following purpose administrator wage increase for 2020-21 fiscal year in the amount of thirty thousand oh ninety six. I'll second that. Okay, uh, motion was made by Councilor Angeloni, seconded by Councilor Diamond. Uh, any further discussion? Um, and the reason I'm making the motion is I, I know we requested information. I read Mike's response as to why he's not giving us the department or the person um, where the wage um, increase goes. Um, and I don't think that we should delay implementing the raises to the administrators. Um, we do have some information and I think what we need to discuss will come up when we do the town manager's evaluation and we shouldn't prolong passing the um, wages on it to the department heads and the other employees. I agree. Okay. Uh, can we have a vote, Michelle? Mayor Viglione? Yes. Deputy Mayor Zampiano? Yes. Councillor Angeloni? Yes. Councillor Diamond? Yes. 
Councilor Judy? Yes. Councilor Fornan? Yes. Councilor Paternoster? Yes. Councilor Bleacher? Yes. All right, next up, uh, we have a review of, of department budgets, physical year end, and that was tabled from the last meeting also. Mike, you have anything? Yeah, I, I don't know that there's action uh, needed. Uh, it's just I think we'll probably capture, obviously this is of, of Ron's uh, request and the motion, uh, previous motion to package uh, the uh, department head and, and reports uh, in a different different fashion. So I'm not sure there's any more anything to discuss on on this one. Okay. All right, we'll move on then. Uh, next is re request to use 2019-2020 unspent funds from police and uh, communications budget that was tabled also. Yeah, and this is, uh, I just, I, I'm, I'm not sure, and it was, you're right, you're correct, it was tabled, I'm not sure the exact extent to why it was tabled, uh, but I, I just want to clarify something that um, I brought it forward because, I, you know, I'm not standing in the way of this and I didn't comment on it. Uh, it has my support. I brought it forward. I, I think, like the other departments, if there is a, a reasonable outline that the chief has put together, which I believe it is in, in terms of getting an opportunity to, to use the surplus money, it, it is going to be allocated by this body or it's just going to fall to fund, fund balance and, and go back. So. I didn't want anybody to think on this council or the commission to think that I was not supportive of this request. That's all I, uh, I have. Okay. I make a motion to verbally transfer. I'll second that. Okay. A motion was made by, by Councilor Duty, seconded by Councilor Diamond. Uh, any further discussion? Can I just ask a question? Part of the next one. Sure. It's part of the next transfer. It's one of the factors of the next transfer. So we shouldn't be voting on it now? Is Correct. that what you're saying, Anthony? Correct. It's captured in the other transfer. So this, this was just their memo as to how they want to spend their money. Correct. And then it's in the appropriation transfers on the next one. So. Right. Can, can I ask a question, which I think may be appropriate in this line? Yes, yeah. I, I've, I have not yet been able to understand the rationale for this. The, the explanation that was in their memo was there's excess funds from last year. We're anticipating expenses as a result of the police accountability legislation that is passed in Hartford. Therefore, let us spend our excess funds from last year. Could somebody tell me, am I missing something? Well, I, I defer to the commission of the chief, but I, I think it was an attempt to outline. Well, I, I think the Victor is, might be the best person to answer it. Sure. <laughs> so what happened during the, the budget session, we were asked to cut the budget back because some of our pension funds were overfunded. We already had an increase for contractual agreements for three to 4%. So when we reduced our budget, we actually took line items out, which are the line items you see there, minus one or two of them that we added in there for like the cutting of the trees, just to start the, the survey stuff. But what had happened is we reduced all those things, like the, the vehicle that is needed and certain necessities, because we tried to come down to meet the financial responsibility. So that's the stuff that you see is the stuff we cut out of the budget because of the pension increase. You know, like one of the line items on the pension increase they calculated for 48% when our chief only gets 10% of pension. That's overfunded. There's another one in there um, for overtime. It's funded at you know 48%. All that extra money we cut out of our budget to get it down to a reasonable amount so we didn't have tax increases. And at the end, I think one of the council members asked for an additional $10,000. So that's how that came out. That stuff was technically needed we needed it for last year, we're gonna need it, plus the surplus for this year for all the new laws that are coming, we're gonna get hurt and we're hoping to get through it with this physical budget by tightening up our budget. Because there's new laws and procedures. Yeah, I, I, I'm aware of that. 
one of the items he mentioned, the, the, the tree cutting, I think he had a $25,000 request for that. Yes. Does that in any way impact our ability to seek reimbursement from the state because we're paying for it outside of our construction contract? Well, mm -hmm. I, I think the only thing on the, the police department was we applied for a steep yeah. grant. That's correct. Which There's is no like 125000 somewhere around there. Right, I remember that. I think that's the most, if we get it, that would be the most that we would get towards. There are no other grants out there to okay. pay for the police department. So we're, well, we have a lot more. Not than, an issue. Got yeah. it. Okay. Thank All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll withdraw my motion since it's coming up next. Okay. So we'll move into appropriation transfers, which was tabled from the last meeting. I'll move the appropriation transfers. Second. Okay, motion was made by Councilor Duty, seconded by Councilor Diamond. Oh, uh, okay, so I, one of the questions from last month in regards to this was um, social services and you know taking out of their budget and the other contractual. Um, and we're and I understand where that came from, and it was. What was it again for social? It was something. It was half of the renters. 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 That's it. But didn't materialize. Okay. Um, but my other, the other part of that question is, why are we? We asked about the equipment maintenance at the generator at NBIS, and who was responsible for that. And I thought that the answer that we got in the minutes is that it. It's the school, it's NBIS, and is there a service agreement and whatever? Because we're paying, you know, 7,500, oh, let me see one's here, NBIS. Yeah, we're paying over $7,500 in maintenance on here, so, which is fine, it needs to be fixed, but the, ans the question still wasn't answered. Is there a maintenance agreement? Who is responsible for it? Is it being done on a yearly or semi-annual basis so that we know that it does get fixed? Yes, Michelle? Um, that had originally gone out to bid quite a few years ago. So the town pays the repair bills for the generator since it's an emergency shelter. Okay. And um, so uh, it's called Tri-State Generator. There's I'm sorry. They're on North Avon Street. Yeah. So they're currently maintaining the uh, annually. They go in every year and do maintenance on the generator. This past year, they had some issues with batteries uh, dying. There was a switch or something like that. So there was more this past year, uh, probably the last two or three months, for maintenance on there. We're currently putting together a uh, townwide bid that you'll probably see mid-September for all the generators in town, the police stations, the schools, um, the firehouses. So that will be coming forward. So we'll be going out to bid again to look for yearly maintenance on all the generators within the town. But Tri-State was hired years ago under a bid, and they've been maintaining it, and the town pays for it under whatever Emergency plan. management. What was that? Emergency management. Emergency management. Okay. okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So are these all of the line item transfers for last fiscal year, 1920, or will there be more coming? 99% sure this is, this is it. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I think the, the motion was made and seconded. Yes. Can we have a vote, Michelle? The only, comment, the only uh, major one left is the Board of Ed 2% fund. It was a request sent down to transfer that money. We haven't reconciled the bottom line with them yet, so that's not in here yet. So 
So hopefully by the yeah. next meeting, we'll be in sync with their numbers. We can verify that that 2% money still exists. I'm pretty sure it does, but we want to be in sync with them financially, which we're not in sync yet. So once so, that gets in sync, it'll be on your next agenda to make that transfer to the 2%. Okay, so the the 2.2 million that showed on department, how, how much everyone had left? Right. Doesn't include their year-end accounts payable, the year-end conferences, <coughs> or the 600,000 coming out. So it's far from the final number for the Board of Ed. Okay, and so you're hoping to have that number also by the next meeting? I certainly hope so. Okay. Yep. Any other discussion? Michelle, can you have a vote? Absolutely. Mayor Vigliano. Yes. Deputy Mayor Zampiano. Yes. Councilor Angeloni. Yes. Councilor Diamond. Yes. Councilor Duty. Yes. Councilor Foreman. Yes. Councilor Paternoster. Yes. And Councilor Policia. Yes. Okay. Next is a lease purchase 2020-2021, which was tabled from last meeting. Well, it looks like. This is both for the Board of Ed's technology part and for the ambulance, but it sounds like they're not ready for the ambulance yet. Oh, I, 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 He's got to change the number. Change it to 275. So, so the information, well, the ambulance payment that whole part of the lease wouldn't apply if we increase the cost from 225 to 275, would it? I mean, right. The rate is still 1.3%. That's the, the motion references the rate, the four-year advance funding. Just substitute the 275 in lieu of the 225. Well, what about the four equal payments of 70,000? That's the Board of Ed technology. That, that's Th that's, that's separate. Okay. Um, and I, I would just feel more comfortable having more of an exact price on the ambulance than just adding 50000 onto this price because from what I heard it was maybe 30000 more to add this. Well, the two, so the, what, what they asked for in the meeting was just to put out there that no more than 275 because originally what, what they were quoted was 225 and it's, you know, like 30000 for that for that lift is the numbers that they've been getting. So they're just, you know, they're looking for a placeholder no more than 275. Is this replacing a, a, an existing unit? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 And that unit number is? The troubled unit, the 2013, it keeps breaking down. Maybe that should be listed to, to replace unit X, Y, Z. So, that so it's documented? Yeah, that's determined by the Board of Fire Commissioners uh, being responsible for apparatus. Um, but the Board of Fire Commissioners voted last night uh, to bring back to this council tonight that the uh, lease agreement be no more than 275. It appears that similar to how we purchased the new engine three, we will be able to purchase the new ambulance through consortium bidding, uh, consortium purchasing process. And then so, what happens to the old, that old ambulance, that trouble yeah, ambulance? Yeah, so the, the question becomes, are we able to sell it outright, Joe? Uh, are we able to trade it in? Um, so, as the um, as the team that has been designated to do this uh, works further on in the process, uh, that would be determined at that point. Um, but the important thing, as Ron brought up, is that uh, since we've purchased the ambulances um, that we have currently in our inventory, uh, federal KKK specs have changed and they require us to have a power lift system in the ambulance, and that costs about $40,000. On a new vehicle, it must be there to use in Connecticut, just for the stretcher, federal requirement. Right, but, but as mat a matter for the record, yep. five, 10 years down the road, we bought a new ambulance, yep. what did that ambulance replace? Can't we have that? Shouldn't we have that documented? Yes, so, so that's what I said. It's going to be replacing ambulance four. Four. Yes. So, can we get that in, in, into this well, we document? Can, yeah. Somehow. But, yeah. but so, but we still don't have. I guess I'm just a little confused here. I know we're 
So all we're locking in is the rate on this lease, and it doesn't matter what the price is, how, how much we're funding. No, you have not to exceed, as, as Councilor Felicia mentioned, at the 1.3 interest rate. It's similar when you did the engine three, if you recall, you did an $800,000 similar thing. That final bill hasn't even come in yet. We're not sure what that's gonna cost you. But you, in order to get the lease in place, you need to have a number in there and a corresponding interest rate. Okay. So the 274, 624.76 still stays in there? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah that's the technology. Okay. And then you're adding on to the, the 275 for the ambulance. Okay. Instead of 225, correct. Okay, so. And then where does the trade in value or the resale value of the 2013 ambulance get reflected? It'll either come off the purchase price or if it's sold, it'll go back into the fire reserve where this money's coming out of. So that'll be another motion at another time when we get the final numbers. As you mentioned, and new ambulances are about a nine month delivery time. So this isn't, if you, even if you got the deal October 1, you're not gonna see the ambulance for another nine months to get all that squared away. Okay, so I guess I'll just read this motion then and make the corrections. Um, whereas the governing body of lessee has determined that a true and very real need exists for the acquisition of the equipment described in the lease purchase agreement to be completed once final numbers and configuration is known. And whereas the governing body of lease lessee has taken the necessary steps, including any legal binding requirements under applicable law to arrange for the acquis acquisition of such equipment, be it here, re be it resolved by the North Brantford Town Council that the terms of said lease purchase agreement are in the best interest of lessee for the acquisition of such equipment, and the governing body of lessee designates and confirms the following persons to execute and deliver and to witness in it or attest, respectively, the lease purchase agreement and any related documents necessary to the consummation of the transactions contemplated by the lease purchase agreement with TD Equipment Finance to acquire approximately $274,624.76 of technology for the Board of Education and funding for a not to exceed $275,000 ambulance based on a four year advanced funding interest rate of 1.3% per annum, subject to the review and approval by the Town Attorney's Office be it further resolved that the North Brantford Town Council authorizes Michael T. Paulus, Town Manager, and Anthony P. Esposito, CPFO, Treasurer Finance Director, to sign the necessary paperwork to enter into a lease purchase with TD Equipment Finance to acquire approximately 274,624.76 of technology for the Board of Education and funding not to exceed a $275,000 ambulance based on a four year advance funding interest rate of 1.3% per annum subject to the review and approval by the town attorney's office. And the final price, the ambulance that is being retired and whether we trade in or sell outright of the retiring vehicle is provided to the town council at the appropriate time when the transaction takes place. All right, I'll second that. Okay, motion was made by Councillor Angeloni, seconded by Councillor Fornan. Uh, any further discussion? No. Michelle, can we have a vote, please? Sure. Mayor DeLeon? Yes. <coughs> Deputy Mayor Zampano? Yes. Councillor Angeloni? Yes. Councillor Diamond? Yes. Councillor Duty? Yes. Councilor Fornan? Yes. Councilor Paternoster? Yes. Councilor Policia? Yes. Okay. Uh, next is a new, new business discussion and action. Yeah. Mayor, uh, on 12, uh, I'm sorry, 13A, uh, uh, Kurt and the assessor have asked that that, that just be uh, no action and we'll, we'll bring that back for the next meeting. Okay. Okay, so we'll move to B. Yeah. Uh, presentation by Town Clerk Lisa Valenti on Election Day preparation. Thank 
Hi, Lisa. Sorry to take this down. Yeah, you can take it, yeah. Is that fine? Okay, I'm going to start with the primary. As you know, the whole I'm here to talk about the absentee ballot process and the impact on my office and what I need to pull off this election because, quite frankly, town clerks across the state are very, very concerned. So I just want to do a backup about the primary. As you all know, due to the pandemic, they expect expanded the reason anybody could have uh, request an absentee ballot to include something. They, they put COVID-19 actually on the application. The Secretary, Secretary of State's office did this. So in addition, they used a mailing house that mailed applications to every Democrat and every Republican in the state of Connecticut and then sent them postage-free um, paid envelopes, which in turn greatly increased the number of absentee ballots we did for the primary. So what happened was they used a mailing house. There were some technical difficulties. So the Secretary of State has now decided not to use the mailing house for the November election. And we, were, we found this out about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, and instead the whole process is given back to the town clerks. So again, she will use the mailing house. So now for in North Brantford, we had approximately 5,000 between Democrats and Republicans, it's pretty even. As of today, we have 9,952 voters for the election because now unaffiliates are in there. They will be getting mailed an application next week, so about 10,000 people in North Brantford will receive an application for an absentee ballot, and it's their choice. Every elector has the choice to either go to the polls, the polls will be open, but anyone can check that box COVID. So what they have decided to do is um, we normally have supplies, and that's what I've, I was trying to show you a visual to explain, but we normally have absentee ballot supplies on hand in order to issue the absentee ballots. And it's composed of these four pieces of paper plus a ballot. The two envelopes, when they come, we have to stamp a return address to come back to North Brantford on this and also on this envelope. We have to put the packets together and then issue the ballots. We have to enter everything into CBRS, centralized voter registration system, put the packets together, get the ballots, issue them, and all this has to be accomplished by October 2nd. One problem, the thought process was to use a mailing house, therefore we were not sent our supplies. Our supplies are being ordered now, Secretary of State's office said they should be shipped to every town clerk by September 15. So our, our time frame is about nine days to get thousands, and I am telling you it's going to be thousands of ballots out. I have two people in my office, and I'm one of the two. So we're very nervous, um, so I do need to hire additional help. The Democrats and the Republicans have reached out to me and they're trying to help get me additional help. So I'm here asking you for funding. I'll need funding and I do not know, I do not have a figure. Um, in order to access the CVRS system to issue the absentee ballots, we need to be connected to that. Right now it's, I have three computers in my office that are connected plus the registrars. We can't use the registrar's office because they're in charge of voter registration. That is increasing by 100, 75 to 100 each week. So they're busy. Um, those are additional voters. And, you know, we're just in the beginning of September. So I had to order laptops, scanners, the printers that go with them. I've ordered five. And I'm hoping to have people that will put the packets together once the supplies arrive and then have an additional five people to help us input this and actually issue the ballots to get them mailed to our voters. There are some grant funds available, um, we're being told. We don't know the amount. Um, the Secretary of State's office does have some federal money still left that they had I received, I believe it was 
five point one million dollars but some of those funds were expended for the primary because as you know the polls were open they didn't see a lot of action at the polls for the primary i'm hoping more people will go to the polls and feel safer since our numbers are very good in in north Brantford. Um, there will be social distancing they do have all the ppe they have the cleaning supplies secretary of state's office is also um, supplying that for each voting district we have two in north Brantford for the registrars i am being told hopefully next week they may give me an idea of how much money they will give to the town clerks to buy the equipment um, also help you know pay for the uh, additional labor i'm not hope <laughs> I'm not sure it's going to cover 100%, we'll put it that way. I have no idea what, what they will give me. So I just wanted to give you an update of what's happening in my world. Lisa, I, what about Election Day and going forward? Who's going to count all these ballots that come in? All, well, the same thing. They, they can go through the tabulator. So we will have central count. We usually do central count here. So the ballots will go through the tabulators. And you don't need additional personnel to do that? That's the registrars. Um, they may, but the tabulators are fast. That's, that's the faster part. But they will need additional help, I think, opening up and separating. Because what happens is they open up, they separate, they separate, they separate, mix up the ballots, and then put it through the tabulator to help protect the integrity so you don't know whose vote is being counted. Um, the registrars, yes, I'm sure they will need additional help, too. We reached out for that. So your problem is approximately two weeks before that October 2 deadline. Mm. And you're looking at five additional people. Five that will have the computers, but I need more to help do this. So I'm not sure how many people I need. Um, the, the thing, see, the, the, what everybody has to understand, and we tr we've been trying to explain to the state is elections is this much of my job I have land records I have vital statistics the rest of my world doesn't stop but we're under the gun and a lot of the town clerk's offices you know we're, we're thinking about we, we may have to shut down our offices to accomplish this we may have to or maybe open one or two days a week to do the other part of our jobs and play catch-up because everybody's vote counts I mean this is an important election So we're very concerned, and we, we want to make sure everybody gets their ballot and everybody has the right to vote. What level of technical ability do you need from these people? I, I need somebody that really can understand. I have, to, I have to instruct them. I have to show them how to do this. Um, somebody who can take instructions quickly and who can use a computer. And what's the date that you would need these people? That's... Um, hmm. That's approximately. debatable. Approximately, I'm hoping September 18th. Th there was something we that was thrown at us. have other town employees that are currently not working in town hall that can help her out. Well, yeah, potentially. I mean, that's that. You know, it's come up. I, I really want Lisa to to be comfortable with who she hires, and, and I'll assist her in in that process. And mm -hmm. I don't know the answer to that. Full. I know there are people have volunteered or talked to Lisa about helping out and, and doing that. So, yeah, I, I think we're going to, you know, I defer to Lisa, but have a plan to mm -hmm. meet well, that to, need. To advertise and get people before September 18th is uh, very, very tight. We've, we've reached out. I, I believe um, both the Democrats and the Republicans have reached out to their people. Um, Frank will be putting something in Totaka Times on behalf of myself and the registrars because you they will need additional help. Of man hour. Many are you talking two weeks? I am to do talking this? no, because this goes on. I issue absentee ballots all and through the month of October, right until the day before the election. Have we ever used a temp service until? Um, not that I recall a temp service now. Yeah. I mean, I'm hoping to have a figure it. also yeah. next week from Secretary of State's office to give us an idea because this, you know, this time around we told them you need to give us funding up front so we know what we're working with and, and how far we can go with hiring people oh, and Mike, to get the help, the many, additional how help. How many people that work in town hall are, are not working? It's Including uh, part-time. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if there's, I mean. Just a, just, just a handful at this point. 
Why limit it to just a town hall? I mean, there are other. Well, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just bringing that up. And anywhere in the town. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Anywhere in the town. You're right. The other thing they they had mentioned today, which was new, because we were we were told the reason for the new um, the new supplies. Also, they they changed. We have old some. I have some old supplies in my office that I was told originally I could not use. Now they're backing up a little, and we don't have anything in writing. It's all verbal that maybe we can use some of these envelopes, which I already have a jump start on. I've already stamped them. Um, but the, the problem is this envelope that they mailed back to us with the federal funds, the new envelope that they'll be sending us will be postage free. It'll be paid for with the federal funds. If I were to use the old supplies, I'm required to put postage on these for the voter, which we never usually do for an absentee ballot. But it's it's all due to the pandemic and the executive order. Now, how many and how, how many of those crafted. envelopes do you have? I probably Hundreds, have thousands. about 400 to 600 to start. Um, that would enable me to start the process sooner if we wanted to do that. Um, some towns are doing that. Some are not. So six hundred thirty three hundred dollars. Right. At first class. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I thought I would throw that out there as well. Again, I don't know what the funding levels are that they will give us. Can you give us but an idea on man hours? I'm planning to work seven days a week until eight or ten o'clock at night. If that gives you an idea. I don't know until I get the applications back, Mike. I'm thinking it's going to be in the thousands. It's seven days a week. I'm not kidding. I would like to have five people at least, and, and that could be, I, I could do split shifts with them, but I need people issuing constantly. We have to break, you know, the applications come in, the first thing you have to do is check to make sure they're a voter. If they're not a voter, those have to go to registrar. You know, we have to send something out and say you need to register to vote. If the registrars aren't there and it's pending, we have to wait until the registrars actually register the people. Um, we're not uh, town clerks do not do voter registration anymore and we don't have access to that part of the system the registrar voters do voter registration the town clerks do absentee ballots but um, if they're not here to do it or if there's a problem we have to wait until they fix that problem with voter registration so there's some delays not many I, I can call them and they'll come right in so that's the one good well, thing you're talking a lot of money yes hundred thousand dollars or more could be until I get the supplies otherwise right now we're, we're, our hands are tied we can't do anything I, I have approximately 80 something applications are ready but the um, applications are being mailed next week from what we were told today 7th 8th or 9th all applications will be mailed to every voter in, in North Brantford and they can either put it in the drop box. We've opened up the drop box, which well, was. Well, they're like the primary. I had six applications come to my house. Two were deceased, and you know, other the, other people haven't lived there. So I yeah, mean, those and those came back, and they were taken out of the system by the registrars. There was there was some sort of technical problem between the mail house and how the how the information was exported. The Secretary of State's office did not give the mail house direct access to CBRS. They exported the information. I'm not sure how that happened. So they're using the mail house again? I thought you said They are using the mail house to mail the applications, but not the ballots. They mailed the ballots in oh. the primary. We entered the information from the applications into the system we did not mail the ballots and and there was some sort of delay that we're still not sure of what happened okay. the ballots were supposed to go out July 21st they did not we were not aware of it until July 28th and people were calling saying where are the ballots we had no idea they didn't go out um, we were supposed to get daily reports from the mail house so that we could track the ballots we never received the daily reports so we couldn't track it. We knew it was entered into the system because I could see the date I entered it. I don't know what happened after that. Might be a silly question, but mm -hmm. no. Do you do you have to do this, or could you hire somebody to to do it, like a like a company? I guess. Or we are could. there even companies? Out I there? don't even know if there are companies out there. I'm sure we could. I would caution against it because of what happened. 
I think the problem is other states that use this mail-in system, they have a separate division that does that. And they use um, mail houses that have been tried and true. It's, it's, it's a little onerous in Connecticut. It's because of our process. I think our process, and I, I stated this, you know, I'm an advocate of change the process before you do something like that. The way our process goes, we are not ready for this system yet. But um, I think COVID is, is a big factor. And I think people who have a problem should vote that way. And then there are other people that perhaps feel comfortable going to the polls. But from what we're seeing, m many people are going to vote by absentee. So Lisa, this, this all has to be done. It has to we be done. I have choice. no choice. No choice. It's all state law. It's all driven from, through the Secretary of State's office. So now we have no say in how it's done. We have to do what we're told. OK. Is it, is it possible that uh, the results from the election may be late getting to where they have to go? Oh, can um, we run into that? that? I haven't heard that. I've asked if they, sh you know, to extend the time. I know it's not a popular thought, but mm -hmm. I believe everybody's vote should be counted. I'm an advocate for the elector, so um, I'm not sure. No, there's been no talk about that. But I just wanted you to know what we're up against. It's it's critical. And it's statewide, it's not just me. And it sounds like you need, you need an answer tonight. Well, the, As the, I go around saying I need an we, army. We don't have a choice. Yeah, no, right. I have no choice, I mean, and, and the best I can do is like you said, you know, I, I would like, you know, people who are comfortable on computers, but I guess I could weed that out as people come in and I'm getting names and I can talk to people and see who's comfortable. I know I have, I actually have one person who wants to volunteer and she has to volunteer. And she said, would you allow me? She's, um, she's dying to go back to work. She's on furlough and she's collecting, but she, she would you know, like to work. And I said, absolutely. But even with that being said, is she, gonna work, is she willing to work the same hours that you I know. Explained? Well, that's why I'm saying I could, you know, I'm happy if we, it can be, a, you know, like I said, a split shift. As long as I can keep that going, that flow going, I'd be very happy. And until I know when the supplies are here, or if I can start going, I mean, I, Suzanne and I can certainly handle what's in the office right now and get that going if we put the postage on. Um, and then the rest will, as I say, I'm, you know, it's just, it just keeps evolving. If we looked into a professional temp service. You just it, pay I, so I've not more. thought of that. Do you? Yeah, the, the, well, you, you, you pay at least 30%. Oh. I mean, if you're paying twelve dollars an hour minimum wage mm. to these people, right? From a and that was the agency, other thing I don't. What should we pay them? Fifteen, sixteen dollars an hour mm. because they cover all the taxes, the oh. insurance, all that stuff. So, so a profit too, so. right? Yeah, correct. And then my thought was to capture all these costs in the grant fund because there oh. will be some grant money against it. And at the end, when all this is finalized and said and done, if she spent say a hundred dollars and she got. $80 of grant money will take 20 out of contingency to make it even. So until we have a final number, it's, right. it's pie in the sky. So mm -hmm. we're going to capture it all in the grant fund. Mm -hmm. Whatever money she's able to arrange from the state will offset those costs. And then the balance, we'll do a contingency transfer. <coughs> Does any of this qualify under COVID funding? I, I know. I'd ask that. We were not sure. I mean, because this is all for the COVID. Yeah. Because it is due to COVID that this has been expanded, this absentee ballot process. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I could ask the, uh, there's the FEMA part of COVID and then there's the COVID relief fund that the state has set up. I could ask, ask both of those gentlemen the question. I would. Worth trying. I mean, the worst is we'll say they no. can say no. is no. Right, right. Yeah. right. So I, I think at this point, that we, we have no choice. We have to do that mm -hmm. and we just, Come back with a the figure mm -hmm. later on and see once what mm -hmm. gets covered by grant if there's any COVID funds and mm -hmm. go from there because we, we can't say no that we're, we're not going to do who it. handles that grant applying for it and getting it um the, sure. the federal funds through the secretary of state's office so yeah, two, they have criteria and they two, limit two, us to so but who in town is responsible for applying for it. Oh, Lisa and I will take care of it. I will, or the okay. registrars. It's I just some want, is for the registrars. It's going to be important. For, I just want to make yes, sure. Yes, it's it's yeah. either me or it's the registrars. The it's funny because I've been um, there have been 
a group of us that have had weekly conference calls with the Secretary of State. There are three registrars and three town clerks, of which I'm one of the three. And um, we, we specified we want the money up front this time. So they are preparing this spreadsheet, which, you know, we keep hearing next week, next week, next week. So hopefully next week, we heard again today, we'll have some idea as to what funds, and they're just going to send us a check up front. She's going they to said have to once have they, to get this done. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they mm -hmm. just... Yeah. Right, he'll just put it into that yeah. revolving fund. You just don't know and, how much. And I do have some money, um, which I didn't want to tap into, but I will. The dollar fund from the land records. One of it has to be for land records. There's a second one that I could use some of that money. Mm -hmm. So there is some help that I can also put in. Well, I also noticed on, on the report of the departments what you elections had like 18,000 left over from mm -hmm. last year they were in a positive yes um, yeah so that helped yes so can we start with that mm -hmm. money absolutely um, yeah. no it's last year's money no it's last okay. year's money but the the, uh, the two they had two designated grants, right? That that uh, that came through, and and I could believe that they are uh, linked well, to population. Yes, the so grants the, will all be linked to population. Are, are, are small. The one them. we did receive, the one you're speaking of, is one thousand dollars plus an additional hundred dollars for each polling place. That should be coming. That's twelve hundred dollars. The other one that Anthony is working on now is a matching, and it's up to um, it's up to three thousand dollars. So we would have to pay three thousand dollars, and they would pay three thousand dollars. So we're trying to purchase um, some laptops with that money. So that's what you're going to purchase the five laptops with that money. Okay. Well, some of them. I don't see why we can't get it out of any excess money that you had from mm -hmm. this year's budget. One of the uh, technical uh, for tonight, if, if you wanted, uh, is is lift the make a motion to lift the hiring freeze in order to um, to do that that is technically still something that the council has to has to do so. all right so I would I'd like to make a motion to allow Lisa to hire part-time temporary employees to cover the election um, do you want to set an amount I don't know what you want to set for a dollar amount I, I, per, okay. Well, we could start with a hundred thousand. No, 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 no. An hourly, rate. hourly rate. An hourly oh, rate. Oh, I meant. Rate. Sorry, sorry. Well, what do you get? You got to get fifteen thousand. You're gonna get fifteen. None of you are hiring. You're gonna get fifteen dollar an hour employees. Well, I would. No, I would say. 12. I was looking at maybe fifteen dollars for the people who are doing the computers and maybe for the packets a little less maybe That's like fine. the twelve dollars I, I, I mean is that okay I, I'm Anything? willing to let you use your okay. discretion okay I'd say not to exceed fifteen okay thank you how does the process work uh, absentee ballots um, for instance yeah. if, if I had an absentee ballot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I went to the polls how, how would they know I voted I'm just curious I don't mm -hmm. know that's no that's um, fair question. The, the when that ballot comes back to me, that's we we put in an issue date that we sent it to you. When it comes back, we also go back into CVRs and say the ballot has been returned. That in turn is what puts the red A by your name on uh, for the um, registrar of voters oh, for so the official list. In, There's a red A oh, okay. next to your name. But the problem. Thank you. The problem with that though is if it has to be postmarked by election day, correct? No, it has no? to be received by election okay. day. All right, good. And that's and that's the other thing. That's what we're trying to encourage any of the voters out there. Please, if you get your application, send them in as quickly as possible. And when you get your ballot, please send it back as quickly as possible. Because some people tend to hold on to it. But we do have the drop box as well in front of town hall. The ballot box, I should say. The ballot box, which is now open. They allowed us to open it. We got we did receive permission to open it to receive the applications as well. So people are dropping that in. What are we setting for a baseline on the employee's account? What do you mean? The hourly? The maximum account that before we have to supplement it so she doesn't go through it all and we wind up with a $200,000 bill. 
Yeah. 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 We, we need some type of baseline or maximum not to exceed in employee salaries. Is that coming out of that account you set up, though? Yeah, whatever it is, it's put in there and then backfill it with the grant money. They should be able to figure it out. So, how many employees are you talking about? Say, say you had to use split shifts. Mm -hmm. 15 bucks an hour is only 600 bucks a week if they put in 40 hours. I mean, $100,000, where would we spend it? So, how? Lisa said we're probably so going to go over $100,000. If you're doing I'm, split shifts? I would think 10 employees at least, but I could use another 20 or so to put the packets together. They're mm -hmm. sending me 80% of the elector of the packets, 80%, which... But once they're put together, I mean, they could be done in, if you had 20 employees, 20 the, Right, people. once the packets are together, but we need the packets in order to issue... Right, um, but I'm just saying it's here. The, the, they're not done working. Here. And system. don't forget, I have the social the distancing the that so I have many, to adhere to. How many weeks total? Um, it'll start, so you figure, September 18th, um, at least through October. Just give me a number of weeks. I'll go with six, 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 seven. Six. Yes, how about seven, just to be Let's sure. Six or seven weeks. $126,000, roughly. Yeah, but okay. that you have everyone working 40 hours? Yeah. Yeah, that's... It, they may not be, but yeah, well, yeah, just yeah. in case. This is not right. an exact size. No, it's a number. <laughs> it's a number. I but, appreciate it. Yeah. Come on, get a better number than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said you're going to probably need a baseline. Of I may, as soon, and as soon as I have money like we um, I the figure from the Secretary of State's office, I'll bring that back to you. How much money they're giving us up front? Well, it looks like she's going to need every bit of a hundred. So why don't we just? say 100, cap it mm -hmm. at that, and mm -hmm. then if she needs more after that, then we can address it at that time. Will we have a better handle on this at the next meeting? I mean, we're gonna give her the money. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a question of coming up with a number. So mm -hmm. does it make sense? Sure, I may have an, I may know some, yeah, to what know the funding a little bit figures. more two weeks from now and say, okay, that's mm -hmm. the number. You can do that. So we just mm -hmm. well, losing those two weeks from now till then, is that well, going to hurt him? No. She should go forward and do what she's got to do. Yeah. yeah, so we're okay. authorizing her to get the employee's pay rate not to exceed $15 okay. an hour. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. And then and she I can, can come the, back with and more the definitive information in two weeks as far as if she got any money from the state, how much she's getting from the state, mm -hmm. whatever. All right, so is the motion still on the floor, right? Yeah. You made the motion. It is. No one I, need a second. I don't think right. anybody seconded it. Correct. I'll second it. Thank you. Okay. Motion was made by Councilor Andrew Loney, seconded by Councilor Fornan. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, we have a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? See where I am here. C. On C. New new business. Yeah, thirteen C. C. Okay. Uh, request to use 2019-2020 unspent funds from Board of Fire Commissioners. Fire Commission. Is that a typo? C commission. Yeah. yeah. That's a, sorry, that's a typo. Yeah. Yep. So okay. there. So I just have a question because there's money from the fire department and money from the ambulance. So is this the ambulance account that's always in the red every year for the it, budget? It's the only ambulance account. So, so if we are always in the red every year and we never fund it fully, how do we have $64,000? As I, as I stated earlier, uh, as a result of COVID, uh, we saved on personnel costs because of personnel not basically not wanting to go to that second or third call. We saved on uh, equipment costs. Let me just go to my reference sheet. So are we completely out of the red in the ambulance account? Uh, Anthony? So I haven't closed the year, so I don't have an answer for you. I don't know how the revenue played out during the budget to actual. This is just the expense side of the house. The revenue was down, as the chief mentioned, there were fewer transports, so there might be a decrease in the revenue as well. I can get that number for you, though. Well, I, I'd be hesitant to spend the money with not knowing 
where, where we stand on it since it's always in the red, that account. And if revenue is down, you know, if we're still in the red or just made a little bit of money this year, but, but we're still in the red, I, I would. So our, our calculations were based upon the information that was uh, accurate, I'm assuming, in the GEM system, which is the town's finance system. So, so with that said, um, so if you, if you uh, did not include the account 4225 number and use just the number that appears in the 4220 account, um, which is, again, on 825, um, and Anthony, you can either confirm or deny this, 6420278. Uh, um, and my guesstimation is that could take care of the uniforms uh, by this request. However, you've got to remember that the fire department is composed of fire and EMS. So uh, hence why the collaboration of funds was going to be used for supplying uniforms for the first time ever in the history of the North Manfred Fire Department. So the North Manfred Fire Department personnel would all look uniform, which they have never. And this has been an ongoing discussion uh, with companies, with the commission, for many, many, many years. And again, as my memo to the town manager uh, stated, uh, this is a one-time effort and based upon the number of personnel that may come on board in the next year and the year after and the year after uh, can be supported internally by our operating budget. The numbers are, are man very manageable. Anthony, to Rose's point, how, I know you haven't closed the year, but I mean, yeah. how? I have to run the, the uh, revenue picture to see how that compared budget to actual. But in other words, a decrease in revenue Due to the call volume being down, so I know what you're, you're saying. If the if there's savings on the expense side, let that roll back to the fund balance, which historically has always been in the red. You're right. Um, that's a valid point. Uh, so Can again, we knock the 64 out and leave just the fire number, uh, roughly 42, plus that six if it's not spent. So if we want to say you know, 48 on the fire side that's left. Well, well you mentioned that just on page 82 of your tablet. Would that report help you versus the monthly report that you get? It has the account by account, the expenditure, the encumbrances. I can print that, it's a 14 page report for the general fund by department, by line item that you're looking for. I think, Anthony, I think one of the problems that we've talked about, for us anyhow, is that sometimes what we get is overwhelming. That's why we're really sh shooting for like a one page just overview so that, you know, it's, like I said, it's it's okay. budget to actual, because um, sometimes you give us you know 13 pages and it's great information. Right. But well, the one page you get now on a monthly basis is that snapshot for every department, bottom line number, budget to actual, including encumbrances. So you have that information already. I wasn't sure what the what the difference on the other one. If you send me that, send me that spreadsheet. I can work with it and try to get it in the number for you. Sure, I appreciate that. But actually, this is a report that I already have. That fact, we use this to make that monthly report. And that you guys get that. So I can give you the detail account by account if that's something you want to see. It's an easy, uh, easy thing. 106,000 is like two thirds of uh, the ambulance, right? For half the ambulance. I'm sorry, one third of the okay. ambulance. You gotta remember that's both budgets combined. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a leftover fire and ambulance. Yeah. I Chief, this doesn't that. need to happen tonight, right? If, if, if we give Anthony yeah, some time to get some more concrete numbers so we can make a better educated yeah, decision? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, again, this is preliminary numbers. I've been in contact with a couple of uniform vendors. Um, I'm going to have to see who's on state bid um, and, then, and then go from there. Yep. Uh, I, I can tell you this. Um, it's, it's been agreed upon by all four company captains that this is a, a very welcomed idea. Uh, I know the chairperson informed the, uh, the other members of the board of this process and there was uh, no, uh, no negative comments. And uh, I, from the small number of people that actually know, 
now everybody will know, um, about this uh, endeavor, um, all, all positive, positive comments. And I can tell you this, it could rectify so many problems that we currently have managing the fire department from a personnel aspect. Gotta remember, you know, the fire department, like it or not, it's the largest department in this town. Largest. So can we table it and then yeah. maybe Anthony can have some more solid numbers on that? Is that a motion? Yeah, yeah I'll make a motion to, to table the uh, fire department's request for uniforms um, for our next meeting. I'll second it. Okay, motion was made by Councilor Policy, a second by Councilor Duty. Uh, any further discussion? Can we have a vote, Michelle? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Next is review and approval of investment policy statement, IPS, for Pension Committee. This was uh, something that's been kicked around for a while. The pension committee initially adopted the uh, recommended for adoption to the town council at a recent town council meeting. It was there was a hiccup with the language in one of the sections. It was discussed at the recent pension committee meeting. The advisor came back with some revised language that met the uh, pleasure of the uh, pension committee, and that has been forwarded on to the council now. It's on page. Uh, 88 and 89 of your agenda packets, 88 being the old language in section three, where the discretion was the stumbling block, and that was revised with the new language on page three, which is an 89 of your tablet. So the pension committee has recommended to the council that they adopt the investment policy statement. I'm going to move to approve the uh, change in the investment policy statement as presented by uh, town finance director. Second. Motion made by uh, Councilor Foreman, Foreman uh, second by Councilor Angeloni. Any further discussion? Just a quick overview on why this is an issue. We've been pressed for some time by our, by our investment advisors to give them discretion in terms of the investments they make on behalf of the town. Our investment policy statement prohibited that. They could not have complete discretion. They had to come back to the town and request permission to sell an investment, buy something new. This change does not in any way undercut that existing policy. What this does is it gives them authority to rebalance our accounts if because of growth or losses in one specific area we've come out of balance from what we had projected to be the spread of investments that the town was holding in their pension plans. Mm -hmm. So all this does is within the, the direction we've given them, if for some reason our investments fall out of that spread, to bring it back within what they were supposed to have by rebalancing the accounts, but they cannot do discretionary trading without coming back to the town for express permission to buy or sell a specific investment. You feel this is a good idea? Yeah. I think it's, it's oh, essential. Yeah. It, okay. It's a volatile uh, stock market. I just think we, we've got to have it to keep our investments where we want them to be mm -hmm. and it's like joe said okay. there it's not discretion they're not picking and choosing yeah. other ones it's according to the plan that we've already approved and they just bring it back to so if it's 35 percent of stocks let's say and we're at 38 they just rebalance back to that 35. so but they're all the guidelines that have already been approved by pension okay any further discussion we have a, a vote, Michelle. Can I just clarify, if you don't mind? Sure. So that, just so I have it correct. So this change gives them the authority to rebalance accounts, but they do not have additional trading um, permission without coming to the pension committee first. 
I don't think you need that, Michelle. It's just we're going to amend the investment policy statement to incorporate the language presented by the finance director on page 89 of our agenda. Okay. I have that. I have the motion. I just wanted to get your point under discussion properly. It is to rebalance the account. Just to rebalance the account. That's accounts. correct. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right, next is uh, maintenance upgrades for bathrooms. No. It's, is it, oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Sorry. What was? No, you're fine. Oh, okay. Don't confuse me. I know. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, maintenance upgrades for bathrooms uh, in Havoc uh, North Brantford High School. Okay, this this item um, I asked to have put on the agenda as a result of having discussion with Council Goad and with um, Al Rose, and I also spoke to both of them today. Based on our uh, tour of the high school, um, we believe that some, a little bit of work should be done because the kids are going to be in that building at least two and a half to three years, regardless of whether we go with a new building or we go with a renovate as new. The bathrooms are appalling. And we, in talking with John Florio, we also talked, he talked about some things that could be done to improve that heating in the hallways. And I, I reviewed it again today with Al and with Walter, and we feel very strongly that, I don't know how we do this, whether we talk to the Board of Ed or something, but there's no reason that some a little bit of work could be done, simple work could be done in the bathrooms for those students that have to live there again for an, at least probably two and a half to three years. It, we, were, we were really upset about it. John Florio has some really good ideas. I think he needs to be consulted. I think the Board of Ed, you, I'm glad you're shaking your hand. Absolutely. Your My daughter's There's no still there reason disgusting. why the superintendent is just leaving that building like that. Um, if there's a message he's trying to send to let people know that you know there's work that has to be done, fine. But what about the kids? What about the kids that are going to be going there for another two and a half to three years? I don't know how we do this. But Al and I and Walter feel very strongly that some message has to be given, something has to be done temporarily. Don't, like as, as Walter said today, even the stalls could be like plastic or something, but it's right now they're disgusting. And we were really appalled on the tour that we went on. So we felt very strongly, since this is a committee really that was developed by the town council, that we bring it back to you. Yeah. Yeah, the buildings, uh, I think the it's a mess. Right thing to do. The, I, yeah. are mess. the bathrooms are a mess. Uh, the, the heating system is, is Especially in the hallway. We know you, can't, you don't want to fix everything, but everybody complains about the hallways. And would you agree with that, Michelle? You, you could talk to any, any student, and they, it is absolutely appalling. They, they, and, they and often can't even get to a bathroom. It's locked. It's and just And I tell you, John Florio has a lot of great ideas, and I wish they would listen to him. And I think they could do so. I don't know how we do this, but bring back well, to the Board of Ed. That something has to be done. Well, I think since the Board of Ed still has to come back to us with the final numbers that they have, you know, they had the $2.2 million left in their budget from the end of the year, and they still have to come back to us. Yes, the 2% fund has to come out of there, and, you know, other things. They're encumbered and purchase open purchase or just whatever. But I'm sure that there's going to be some money left there. Right. And until we get that number, I think we kind of just wait and see once and I would suggest that we take some of that money because I totally agree with you that we should use some of that money. We gave them money a number of years ago and they ended up for the bathrooms and, and they, they ended up it. giving it back to us right. to fix NBIS because that they didn't do anything with that and that was the newest building. So I would be in favor of using some of the money that they give back to us and allocate it towards certain things. But I think we need to control that. I, I would agree, and I believe me, if you guys are going on the tour with us, you Oh, would we've agree. seen it. I mean, I've seen it. We must, we, we we could must do all have a, a, a safe and secure environment. Exactly. Regardless of whether we're building new or 
build and it's or remodel is it doesn't matter. Yeah, we have to provide that. I mean, we could do important. we could do like we did with the um, North Brantford Intermediate School. If the town will turn it over to or the Board of Ed will turn it over to us, we'll go in and fix it with their money. But I think what Ruth said, we should we should find out what the total amount is that they have. Right, and Anthony is hoping by our well, next meeting to see once what that number is coming back to us. And then, but I think in the meantime, we need to get, if there's some way we can get some kind of estimate or if there's some dollar, I mean, I don't know what it would cost to put in, because I, I know if, the, if it's the heat in the diamond, it's because the, the hallways aren't heated in the diamond. But, but John talked about some things that could be done. Right, you can put in the split systems so that you have heat and whatever else in there. Um, so yes, there are things that, and so if we could get some idea and whether you tap into John Florio and say, you know, for the heating, like and how many would- Walter had some good ideas and even had some numbers for, for what could be done in the bathrooms. Right, so- Is that something we would need to hire somebody for or can our people do it? We'd probably, no, have yeah, we'd probably have to hire someone for that. Yeah, it's a specialty to put up those uh, stanchion walls and everything else. Uh, but I think, uh, just to echo everybody else, I think in today's environment with COVID and stuff like that, I mean, cleanliness but, is. But school starting soon, so we have to do it with a yeah. priority. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're just. Anthony said we should have the numbers at the next meeting, which is in two weeks. So, um, I mean. It's Going to take and a in, bit in the time. meantime, somebody should draw up some specs for it. Somebody should. Actually, I, I would. I'll call Walter tomorrow because he had a handle on it. He really had, had, had some good, about the bathroom part. I think we need John Florio for the other piece. Okay, but we also need Board of Education or the superintendent to say come into our building. Well, I think what Rose said before is true. I think we need to take over this part. So it's no different when they told us to fix NBIS because yeah. they didn't. Isn't it really our building? Well, it is, but they're, they are. They, they control are, it, They Joe. maintain it, <laughs> which. <laughs> Supposedly, <laughs> got it. <laughs> Proof on that? <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, you know. Did you have some, maybe you can uh, have some conversation with yeah, Scott? Yeah, uh, you know, I can reach out to Scott and, and give him the sense of the council's uh, desire to, to follow sort of the same model as NBIS. I mean, we're not looking to make all the bathrooms ADA no. compliant no, right. and no, all that stuff because, right, you know, right. that's the last time that's where the numbers went is, you know, we, we, just were, want at, we were at a half a million dollars. We just want them fixed and unlocked. Right. Well, so so we got that and, 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 and heating system. system issues in the hallway. So I think John Florio is is the key guy to He's obviously to, yeah, to talk absolutely. to, and I can reach out to Scott, let him know that the, the council's desires to do this. We're going to get numbers for the next meeting, and then at the same time, um, talking with John to start, and, and Walter to to bring together a sort of a strategy and a plan to address it. And He's going to be a priority in a couple months. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, that's the other thing, Mike. I mean, you, you know, it, it is the timing issue of, of school starts next Tuesday, right? So, um, in, in theory, these are these are jobs that we do in the in the summer, right? Well, so, unfortunately, it's too late now. For yeah, that. right, right. So now it's got to be, you know, we got to look at, uh, you know, I got to look at the calendar. I don't know what their their breaks are and and, and so forth, but I'm sure yeah. some of it could, some of that bathroom would probably be done on the uh, weekend. Weekend, so. yeah, right, right. I mean, we're we'll going to pay a little priority to get it done on the weekend, but we could get it done on the weekend. Yeah. Well, Thank yeah. Or, or, well, the other thing also is if, if we have a company doing it, you know, the high school is out at a certain time, you just work it in the bids that their work hours. Yeah, evenings. Yeah, right. Right. yeah. Whatever, right? Right. Right. So we'll have a number maybe hopefully by next. Well, I don't know if we'll have all the numbers, but no, we can start working on it. Yeah, from the Board of Ed, we right, should hopefully we do. Yes. Okay. And, and also they came up with, what, $100,000? They must have had some specifications when they came up with those numbers. I'm sure they didn't just pull them out of the air, hopefully. Um. <laughs> well, well, so well. maybe Mike could talk to Scott and see what they had for numbers when they put that. But that was, cost th that was like four years ago. So it's, well, I think we need to right. get yeah, some. I may have to consult the, the 
the building official. I mean, I, I, I don't know, but I'm, I'm just speculating that we get into bathrooms and remodel that we trigger, you know, ADA accessibility stuff. And, but we'll go down that road. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. I mean, it's agreeable that it's, it should not be in that condition if I'll convey the message. It's embarrassing. Well, it sounds unusable, much more so than embarrassing. Would it be possible instead of replacing the, the units to paint them? Uh, they've been painted so yeah. many times, well, I think the paint is well holding some it. of them up. Oh, they've made it look pretty plenty of times. <laughs> now it has to be functionable. Yeah. Okay, okay next we have uh, Ward of Bid number 4, 2020-2021, fencing, fencing for North Farm Soccer Field. Right, um, so you have a memo and, and uh, the low uh, bidder there with a the recommendation. Um, so uh, Jesse and, and Fran has put that together, and Michelle is here also to sign off on their recommendation to award that to the uh, low bid. I'd like to make a motion to award bid number four, 2021 Fencing for North Farms Park Soccer Field to Aquaturf Irrigation of Orange, Connecticut at a total cost of $35,972.40. Second. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, you seconded. Sure. I did. Joe. Joe. Okay. A uh, motion was made by Councilor Angeloni, second by Councilor Fornan. Uh, any further discussion? We have a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, uh, next is review and approval of bid specifications for bid number six, 2020-21, uh, contract, contractors equipment rental. Sorry, is this the standard one that we do? It, it is yeah. the standard Everyone. one, yes. So I make a motion to approve uh, Bid number six, 2021 contractors equipment rental um, to go out to bid. Second. <coughs> okay, motion was made by Council Angeloni, second by Deputy Mayor Zampano. Uh, any further discussion? A vote, please, Michelle. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. All right, next is 8-24 uh, re referral for shell tower lease at TVES, 1388 Middletown Avenue. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to table this item. Uh, I still have a number of questions. Um, I, I have feel the answers. Part, uh, do you have the answers? I well, I, I still think that there's, I would also, besides having the answers to those questions, I think that we would like to see the reason, we would like to see the balloon test Okay. Can I give you that answer? So you so everyone will know when it is. Uh, okay. It is scheduled for this Thursday. Okay, well we would like to be able to see it. Well you hope you don't see it. I pardon? No, you, I, you hope you don't I see it. I will be able no, yeah, right. right. <laughs> I don't see it. Right. Uh, so just it's scheduled for this Thursday, but uh, if the weather uh, interferes with it, it'll be Friday. Okay. But I would like Do I, we have I, a time? All day? Uh, normally, uh, it's six hours. I'll get the specific hours that it's going to be up, so you can go out. Uh, based on the visual, uh, it's uh, about uh, at the it's same at the same now. at the same site that the tower is set. For. That it'll be the exact location where the proposed tower is is going to. Uh, so this is just made to mimic the tower, so people could see. It's a red, big red balloon, so that it's actually more obnoxious. And you should be able to see it uh, more clearly than you know the uh, uh, silver tower when it's uh, when it's erected. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll send an email to stay here. I would appreciate that. Okay. Um, I just have some other comments on this because the school uses this property also for um, outdoor activities, and they have. Um, a project adventure course set up and I see they want to put an access road in here so and it's coming off of the school parking lot so it 
I guess how that will um, correlate or work in conjunction with the school, especially with everything going on with COVID, they are using the outdoors for more outdoor activities and what impact this would have on that. Right, so with respect to the trails that are existing, mm -hmm. uh, there, uh, I was advised that the access road, which is about 1,100 feet in length by 15 feet in uh, width, uh, is proposed to be on the, uh, let me say the, the well, so this, this map here. Yeah, the, kind of hug the south side of the border until it moves up. There are no direct impacts to the trails, but there are two trail crossings. So, in other words, no trails will be uh, 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 removed or, or destroyed as a result, but where the, the uh, access road cuts, there'll be two. So, there'll be a, foot, a 15 foot. Uh, crossing on two trails. Uh, otherwise, I believe it was uh, located in an area that had the least impact on any of the existing trail network that's that's there. Okay. Um, and how often would this road get used? I mean, I'm assuming it's for maintenance on the cell tower. Correct. Initially, be used, utilized for the construction, the development of the tower. Uh, and then once the tower is constructed, it'll be utilized for maintenance purposes. So uh, the way that the tower would be uh, designed, the, ta the town would have uh, the top access for uh, emergency purposes. Uh, and there would be a generator on site that the developer would uh, uh, provide for the town at no cost to the town. But there still are some other safety issues. I would worry about children from TBS being able to go up that road. I, I, I have a lot of questions right. about. I have a lot of questions about the fencing around that tower, and about the ability of kids to get up to that tower, and what kind of roads. Mm -hmm. I, I feel that it needs to be tabled until we have some more information. Well, there, 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 ice comes off those poles. Right. You mentioned at, that to me too. Pretty heavy rate. Um, if there's a nice buildup, and there should be some safety barriers around there when that occurs. The the whole compound. Uh, which is going to be about 60 by 60 or 75 by 75 a square where the tower would be located would be full, fully enclosed with fence and the access road would have a lock gate uh, so uh, for purposes i don't know uh, if there are any in town uh, i'm not aware but it's it's a it's a high fence uh and it's the whole compound is surrounded by it so uh I think that's as secure as any uh, tower site is ever is, is going to be. Uh, the uh, I don't know if you have uh, there is a motion to table. Uh, right. I, I'm Which happy is to give you any information that I have now, and we can talk about it again next next meeting. Uh, but uh, totally up to you. Well, I just wanted to bring up other issues so that if you had to get some more answers, mm -hmm. that there were questions that you just got all the questions. And that the, we could the think balloon of. test is very important. Did anybody second your motion? I second it. I second it. I second Murray. Okay. <laughs> Lou got it. Yeah. Lou so is this in place of 781 Forest Road? Uh, so no. 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 This oh, is so Middletown Avenue. 1388 is behind Just GBS up on the No, hill. I asked, is this, is, thir is this location in place of 781? Uh, Just so you're aware in your considerations and for your questions. Uh, one of the reasons why the town manager and I were uh, looking at this site was because the alternative site would be on private property. So uh, if the tower were look to be located on private property, uh, then uh, the town would not derive any benefit from that private property located tower. Meaning uh, that while the town would be entitled to co-locate on that tower, the town would not get any non-tax revenue from uh, that tower. While it's correct that you would not have impact to your property, your municipal land, uh, but you would not have control as a municipality over that tower, uh, meaning that you wouldn't have, uh, by, locating, by locating a tower on municipal land, you can better control where it's located, 
You can uh, look, better control screening of it. You can better control uh, access to it. So that's why a lot of municipalities prefer to have these towers located on municipally owned lands. You also get non-tax revenue from it. So you get to co-locate on it generally at the cost of the developer. And then you get uh, monthly rental income when AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile are located. So they generate, uh, they generate you know, twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars a year in revenue. Uh, you know, I get you specific numbers, but well, God so knows we need better coverage up there. Yeah. Well, um, so the point being that, but we have nobody a, said we're going to get better coverage yet. Well, we're even well, up well, well they it did in, in some of the in this location. It's either the question ultimately after you get your answers is. Is it on town property? Uh, is or it private? on town property, or does it go or elsewhere? Private property. If it goes elsewhere. That's fine, but you, then you lose the benefit of having but the town. I, I want to go. Wait, hold on. Hang I'm up. Certainly in favor hang of public safety. Wait. It's just that Wait. I have a lot of questions no, about the location. You, you need to get your, your questions answered. You're 100. percent Hold right. on for a minute, please. Let me let me get this done, and then you can talk all you want. Uh, Michelle, are you all set? And just the, the motion was made by Councilor uh, Diamond, second by Councilor Patanaster. Two. Table. To table. Any to table. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. Any uh, further discussion? Go ahead. Um, I just wanted. I didn't want to forget what was going on. Okay. There, so. Got you. Um, to to my um, Paul Zito is the uh, consultant on the uh, townwide communication. So he was he was informed and and I spoke with him uh, and had a couple of meetings with the chiefs as well. He believes uh, that a tower at that location would improve the coverage in that area what he he estimates as 40 percent right now to going to at least 90 maybe 95 percent. Did he put it in writing? He did not put it in writing. He's still doing his he's still doing his oh, report. When it comes in writing then I'll vote for it. But oh, until okay. then. And the other thing Mike he is puts you, his signature you, had on it. Yeah. you had a lot of conversation. With, I've talked to both chiefs and neither one of them had that much information about it. I think they need more information as well. Oh yeah they they have. Uh, well they, that's not what either one of them said to me. They, they were on they were on the uh, call with Paul Zito, um, so I, I don't know how much. Will that location affect coverage for the ice pavilion at all? Well, it will help. It will certainly will certainly help. Because I know that's a that's a dead spot or a real troublesome it's like, spot. It's like a dead zone right in that area. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Dead zone. I'm not opposed. See, it's still got to get over. It's still got to get over the mountain, as long as the balloons there, and, and you could see um, the ice pavilion from that hill, then it might help. But until then, we don't know where it's located yet. Where it's, you know, on that mountain or on that hill. So, and that, that's why I find it highly impossible or high, highly irregular that somebody would say it's going to improve by 90%. No, up to, up to when, when we don't even have a test from that site yet. Uh, but he did, yeah, it's just a computer uh, generated now. Oh. So I suppose it's tomorrow. Ben, is tomorrow somebody supposed to be checking the wetlands part of this? Yes, so, uh, <laughs> well, because, because what you don't know is it just so happens that one of my neighbors knows the owner of that company and he's already spoken to me. Okay, so <laughs> tomorrow, uh, the wetlands will be flagged. Uh, the, uh, there is no direct wetland impact. There may be uh, construction within the upland review area. Uh, but that will be determined tomorrow. But definitely not in the wetlands, I was told. Uh, but we'll wait to see what the flag shows tomorrow. Uh, and, you don't uh, have to answer all my questions now. Okay. Uh, and no lights. I'll tell you right now. No blinking red light. <laughs> I guess it's not. Because every time I hear a different story, it's a different height. I heard 120, I heard 140, I heard 160. I heard 140. Well, you have to assume, well, if it's a 120 tower, it's going to be 140 with the whips on top. And cause, you know, the top of the tower is not the top of the equipment. The top of the tower is the top of the tower. Your whips are going to probably extend 20 feet into the air above that. Now, that's going to be the municipal antennas. Then that some uh, height below that will be Verizon and then AT&T and t -Mobile. So where do they put the balloon at? They'll, they put it at, I believe they put it at the height of... Uh, It'll either be whatever the high is, so it'll either be 120 or 140. But it's supposed to be at the height of what the power is. They're not going to make it look like one of those 
really, really, really fake looking trees. And you want it? No. Uh, yeah. Those no. look worse. They look worse. <laughs> no, they, uh, that was, uh, there's actually a story to the one on the, the hutch uh, as to why, because you gotta go like 20 miles away for it to actually look good uh, from uh, a wealthier neighborhood. But, uh, uh, so in any event, what I'll do is I'll circulate uh, do you have your questions in uh, in Word that you can email to me? Yes, I could. If you can email that to me, then I'll put the answers underneath each of your questions, and I'll circulate your and my, questions. And I have other questions. So I, I keep be, getting them from people. I have no doubt. And if you want to feed them to me, okay. as you get them, uh, I'll try to turn them up. A lot of the a lot of the answers we already have with the proposed lease, and uh, so I'm happy. I want to make everyone as informed as possible, so you can make an informed decision. Can we all get copied on that too? Just, so yeah. that? just do not answer, reply to all. If you have a question, just reply to me. And then what we'll do is we'll take out the, uh, I'll print out all the emails and we'll include them in the next month, uh, next meeting minutes. So that. <coughs> okay, any more discussion? Michelle, can we have a vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right, next we have uh, citizen statements and petitions. Yeah, I understand the, uh, I see a Facebook page that our emergency shelter is open over the weekend. Is that right, Lieutenant? No. No. Did you say it on a Facebook page? I don't think so. It was not, it was not officially open. Do we have a, a the, the position of the Red Cross in the light of COVID, they'd rather put people in hotels than open up emergency shelters. Our emergency shelter is at NBIS. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, I brought this up before. Uh, some of you just may realize it. But, you know, we're, let's face it, we got these, what they call extreme weather conditions now. And this is going to happen. Again, in the winter, it could be to be a cold like it was a couple of weeks, uh, winters ago, for like eight days in a row. And the point I'm getting to was the, we don't seem to have a, a, sh a shelter that's open 24 hours. We use this building, Stanley Williams, the libraries, in limited hours, after eight o'clock at night, to five in the morning, if you had a person that needed that, you don't have a place to go. So I'm suggesting that we uh, really consider looking into making sure if it's going to be that bad, let's make sure we have a shelter there. Either that or put enough money in the budget so you can keep Stanley Williams open. How can you throw somebody, I'm, I'm exaggerating, mm. but how can you put somebody out at 8 o'clock at night because the building is closed? Especially like in the winter. Another you know thing, you when Mr. Buck came in about five years ago, had a nice presentation at uh, Stanley Williams. Had a good crowd in the room, too. And it was all about uh, how uh, an individual in their own home could prepare, have something in their house. And at the end of the meeting, uh, he actually took uh, a list. I, I was five years younger then, but I was volunteered. He, it sounded like he was going to set up a cert team community emergency response team. I never heard anything. Maybe they didn't want it. But uh, do we have a cert team? No, 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 we use North Haven. Yeah. Why can't we have our own? The, the goal we is got, to have our own. Yeah, we're, we've got great volunteers in this town. We know that. Don't <laughs> we don't, maybe we can add another little volunteer team that, that uh, take the weight off strong enough. Anyway, that's something to look for in the future, especially if it needs a few dollars in the budget. Thanks, thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Okay, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nobody wants to go.